afternoon, friends. It is a rather cold Tuesday afternoon, but I have 15 guitars in the queue. Um, not actually here, but in the queue waiting to come in. So needs must, and I'm gonna crack on and get some done. And we have a new guitar in here. Uh, I do believe it's a new client. It is a new client. It's come all the way from Bradford, drove his guitar down, and there it is. And I've had one of these guitars before, and it is made by, just check the name again. It's a Bloodstone handmade guitar, a beautiful looking thing. And you'll notice the headstock is a different color to the fingerboard, and I'll get to that in a minute. But let's look at the woods. That is a cap on top there. And there you go. We have three piece body by the looks of it. Yeah, three piece body with looks like three, could be walnut stripes, could be rosewood. I don't know. It could be any wood stained. I don't know. So it's a three piece body, two piece cap. Uh, would the cap be mahogany? I have no idea. I don't really know my wood grains to be honest with you. The neck is a maple neck. It is a, it's quite a nice maple. But you'll notice it's a completely different colour to the fingerboard and that's because the owner of the guitar has sanded off all of the lacquer. Because he said he'd seen me do it on a guitar before and he wanted that doing but he didn't want to pay all the cost of me sanding it down which would have been expensive. So I says, well you sand off what you can and I'll finish it off. Now he's only sanded it to 280 grit so I'm going to sand it down to 400 grit and I'm going to stain it. I'm going to try and get it back to the colour or the same colour as the fingerboard and I'll be using anything I have to hand. That could be turmeric, it could be curry powder, could be coffee, could be tea, could be wood stain, uh, could be um, anything. Anything that makes a colour. Um, the headstock logo is slightly gone. It says you can get rid of that if you want. I don't want to get rid of that. I want to keep that intact. But I am going to lightly sand it down to 400 grit. Um, the reason he, he did that himself and, and wanted to save on the expense is he does have a certain budget in mind and he does want a lot of work and he thinks it's going to need a, a fret level. Uh, certainly with him sanding the lacquer off, uh, the frets are sticking out at the side so they've got to be redone anyway. I have not checked the frets for level so I don't know. But it is going to have a set up. Bloodstone Guitar Works, handcrafted in Derbyshire UK. I did have a Bloodstone in a couple of years ago, didn't I? Telecaster, if you remember. Um, and that was a really nice guitar to work on. So this is going to have a full bit. Also something else about this guitar, it does have a five way switch. So I imagine it does various parallel series, um, whatever type switching. I, don't, I will have to ask the owner again. He was talking about it, but it's difficult to take things in when you've only got two, three minutes and you're both wearing masks uh, during this COVID blah, 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 blah. So uh, I will ask him again, says a Fender plate on there. It's got the three barreled saddles, which I personally do not like uh, because you can't set the intonation properly. This is one of the non-staggered ones, so uh, that makes it a little bit more difficult. But it certainly looks a fantastic looking guitar. Medium weight, not heavy, not light. Um, and yeah, it just looks really, really nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the string, well I'm going to play it first, I'm going to plug it in, I'm going to play it, see what it sounds like. I'm going to test all the options on the five-way switch, make sure the pots aren't scratching or anything. Uh, once that's done, we're going to remove the strings, I'm going to remove the neck, and we're going to check the, well we're going to check the frets before I remove it. I'm going to be removing the neck anyway. I don't think there's anything to do with this end, I think it's all going to be to do with the neck and the frets. So uh, only time will tell. So I'm going to go and plug it in a little while, have a little play, have a little tinker. I can already see that the nut spots won't cut in lower for one. And um, we're gonna, I'm gonna check the frets and I'm gonna bring you back in, let you know what I think. Um, also what I'm gonna be doing with the frets. They certainly are sticking out there, so we've certainly gotta round these edges off again. Um, and I'll let you know if we need to do any leveling. If I do do any leveling, we've got to remove that nut, which again, the lack is sprayed over the edge of a nut, so that's, it's not a problem, it's just, a little bit more picky, pinicky getting it out. But anyway, let me go and do these things offline and I will come back and let you know very shortly. So one thing I forgot to mention, uh, the input jack, the socket there is protruding from the body. It shouldn't be protruding from the body. That should be sunk right in. I don't know why it's come out. Uh, I'm gonna get a wooden block. Well, I'm gonna have a look first, see what's what, but I'm probably gonna go and get a bit of a wooden block on there and tap that back in, but that should not be sticking out so that's one thing i forgot to mention earlier right so where are we with this two thing one thing good one thing not so good right 
it sounds amazing. This five-way switch. I don't know the exact settings on this, but it seems like the first three settings are normal. Bridge, bridge, neck, neck. Because they all sound right to me. Fifth position is these two set up in like a humbucker mode. So it's like you've got one wide fat humbucker. It sounds amazing. You can get play metal on this setting. Uh, position number four, I'm not quite sure. It may be these two out of phase or something like that. So I'm gonna go and find out. So it sounds fantastic. How does it play? It doesn't play that well. And uh, the reason it doesn't play that well is the nut slots are so high, I do not understand this. I don't get how someone who's building a guitar can have the nut slots cut so high above the first fret, especially on the uh, strings one and six. Th there's a gap here of about, I don't know what it is. It's over, it's well over a millimetre uh, from the bottom of the string, top of the fret to the bottom of the string. It's way too high. So I do not understand that. Oh, don't get me wrong, I'm not slagging the company off. I'm just saying that does not sit well with me. Um, I've been across with a fret rocker. I've loosened the strings. We've got the neck just about straight. It's not perfectly straight. There's a tiny, tiny bit of relief in there. There are at least 10 high spots that I've been across, probably over eight frets. I'm going to get the strings off, go to straighten the neck and check them properly. But we are going to be going for a complete fret level. Um, which means I've got to remove the nut. I'm also going to remove the tuners and everything and we are going to re-sand this neck and stain it. I'm going to get it in under budget. This guy has a budget. I'm going to do him a favour. Because if I was charging for everything I'm going to do on this guitar, giving him a fret level, a set up, a set of strings, and blah, 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 we would be looking at about £185. That includes me sanding the neck, staining the neck, and oiling the neck. Uh, so all in all, that with a fret level and a set up is not expensive at all. I'm not going to be charging him that. We already agreed, uh, a well, he told me his budget beforehand. And I said, whatever we need to do, I will get it in under your budget, being as a new client. So um, his, his budget is £150. Uh, I'm going to do it in budget for him with a set of D'Addario 10 strings. Um, you know, it's a little bit of extra work for me, but not a problem. There's nothing wrong with the electrics. They're working fine, no scratchy parts. So I don't need to touch anything on the body. It is all going to be network. So I'm happy with the price. Um, the most difficult thing will be getting the wood to match the colour of this. Um, I would have preferred him not to have sanded down the headstock at all. I would have left the headstock. I would have just sanded this part of the neck and the rest I would have blended in like I did on the last one I did. But that's okay. We're still, I'm still going to do exactly the same. I'm going to slightly tint the wood. Uh, we're going to sand it to 400 grit, slightly tint the wood. I'm sure it'll be quite easy. I'm going to, have to roll over these fret edges because the frets are sticking out the edge and they are quite sharp. Um, that's the only way I can do that. So I'm going to dress all of the frets anyway. Normally for something like this, I'd probably charge with all the fret work. If I was sanding this neck from scratch, you'd be looking at 225, 250 pounds for the whole lot. With the work he's already done to help me out, I'd be looking at about 185, 190 pounds. I'm going to charge him 150 because that's his budget. Um, I'm quite happy with that. And I'm going to enjoy doing the guitar anyway. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the strings. These strings are all brand new actually. I'll probably use these again. Um, but I'll measure the strings. See what I'm going to stick a set of uh, D'Addario 10s on there anyway. Pickups sound nice. The guitar sounds lovely and fat. I need to find out what these settings are on this five way because it's really, really exciting. It's got a real big sound, which is fantastic. It's got to be heard to be believed. And what a great looking guitar. So let's do it justice. Another thing I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be recutting the nut slots and reshaping the nut. That needs doing as well. So like I say, I'm going to get the strings off. We're going to get uh, the neck off and we're going to go along. And we're going to check these frets properly and see how many we need to work on. Not that it matters because we are going to level the whole lot anyway. So back soon, guys. One problem I find with the, if you're building a, a Fender style guitar and you're putting a truss rod at this end, use one of the um, wheel adjuster types like Levinson Blade used because there's nothing more of a ball ache on a guitar than having to take the neck off to adjust the truss rod because that is underneath the pick guard. So I don't get that. I don't get why I do that. I do understand you're not wanting to drill a hole here because this is a weak point on a guitar, a very, very weak point, especially with the strings pulling up as they do. 
So yeah, it does make sense to have a truss rod at this end, but why not use the wheel adjuster types? They're much easier, you just get a little screwdriver in there or whatever, you can turn it without having to remove the neck from the body. So, that said, I'm going to adjust the truss rod, we're going to get the neck straight. It, should be, it is a 4mm adjuster. I hope I've gone right way with that. No, far too much relief in there, which way did I go? Gone that way, so I need to go this way. And get the neck as straight as I can. Still some back oh, there's backbone in there now. Oh, wow, it really is. Good thing about it is, with it loose, it should be straight. Still a little bit of backbone in there. So that's saying it should be about right. Yeah, nothing more of a ball ache than um that's backbone again. Having to keep taking a neck off and adjusting it because you don't want to be taking strings off and putting them on again every two minutes. Just get a truss rod right. Now, in its favour, I've found that setting a neck dead straight like this, once you've got the neck dead straight and you put it on with your toy, you've normally got just the right amount of relief when you put the strings on. So that kind of does work, but it doesn't work all of the time. This is not a dead straight neck. It's one of these necks, one of these special super necks that is up and down. It's got a little bit of relief there, and it's got a little bit of back bow there. Let's have a look again. So it is dead flat up to fret 12, then it's got some relief, and then it touches at the end there. So we're going to do, basically we're going to take a best average and get the neck as straight as we can, then we are going to level the frets across that. A little bit disappointed that for me, a little bit disappointing. Yeah, I can see that, I'll show you. Uh, more when I have got um, I'm going to bolt this to a piece of MDF so we can get the neck dead straight and I'm going to bring the camera over bring it close and I'm going to go across with a fret rocker that is as straight as I can get it for now I'm going to remove the tuners um, and everything in a moment I'm going to get that set up like I said I'm going to bolt it using its own bolts and neck plate to bolt it to a piece of 30mm MDF I'm going to get it set dead straight I'm going to bring the camera over here we're going to go across with a fret rocker so whinges about the truss rod aside at least the truss rod works uh, which is great, it just is a little bit annoying to have to keep taking the neck off to set the truss rod. But anyway, let me get this set up and I'll bring you back soon. Okay guys, so we are trying to set the neck as straight as possible. And we're not straight edges, touching at this end, touching at this end, but there's a small gap there. There's too much relief in that. So we are just going to very slightly tighten that truss rod again. Let's see where we are. That is actually loose now. Let's see where we are. It should be dead straight when it's loose. Oh, that's not so bad. There's still a lot more relief in this area here. Oh, excuse me, just in this area here. I do not understand that because that should not be there at all. I'm going to turn it slightly the wrong way and just see where we are. Because what we do is if we do have a neck that goes up and down along the whole length, and that, that was a very big exaggeration, what we tend to do is we tend to get it as straight as we can. Right, I've gone the wrong way with that because relief all the way down. So let's just go back. Let's see where we are. Tiny bit of relief again. Yeah, if we can't get the neck dead straight, we use an average and we go as straight as we can because we make the, don't forget the level and the playing surface of the guitar is not the fingerboard, it is the tops of the frets. Okay, that's looking pretty good. We start getting a tiny gap from here to here. Just tighten that a little. I don't want it to start lifting right, it's just starting to lift at this end now, so we don't need that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn it back and I'm going to do exactly what I told you. Basically with the truss rod loose, a little bit of back bow there and a little bit of relief there. That is as good as we're going to get it. 
and we are basically we've got a tiny bit of lift at this end I don't like that we've got backbow in there I don't want any backbow whatsoever right we have no backbow there I don't want backbow okay very very odd because we have relief from here to here only a little but the next dead straight here we have a bit of relief from there that should not happen your relief should only happen between basically the 15th fret and the second fret so that means the neck was not straight when it was fretted because this edge here is touching the wood it's right touching the wood there and it's touching the wood here it's touching the wood all along here until we get to basically this area and we've got a slight gap we've got a slight a, a more of a gap there so what is i'm going to set this as my straight neck so my level is going to be done with the neck in this position because it's straight at straight at the end straight at the end and straight up to here so we've got a bit of deviation there now that is not abnormal um, it does happen on quite a lot of necks we get it where they're not perfectly straight along the length and it's 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 a thing I see regularly we're only talking very very tiny amount of gap anyway so what we're going to do now is this is where we are going to check the frets you'll notice especially with keen item one you will notice I've already removed the knot I should have put that on camera removing the knot is a very it's a simple but could be a dangerous process what I tend to do is cut the edges with a knife and just get a, a screwdriver, a three mil screwdriver and just place it under the bit of bone and give it a gentle tap with a uh, with my fretting mallet just to loosen the knot and it came out clean like so it was glued in uh, it came out clean so that means when it goes back in it can go back in clean now what we're going to do, now my neck is rested again we are going to check it again make sure I'm happy with where we are I'm happy that that is, that is as straight as I'm going to get it. It seems to slightly cock up here. Maybe it's got a build up of lacquer there. I don't know. There's nothing I can do about it. I've got to make that the level. So we're going to remove the truss rod adjuster. We're going to take my fret rocker. Do you mind? We're going to mark up the frets that need work. So let's have a look. That one's okay. That one's okay. Well, because these were rocking earlier, I might not need a full fret level yet. Uh -huh. Okay, Let's see where we are. We are going to need to do a fret level because of the shape of the neck. What I am going to do is, I'm going to do, we do need a fret level anyway, but I was going to do a skim across all of the frets already because the neck isn't straight, we're going to make the top of the frets all level with each other. And the only way to guarantee that is by doing a fret level. And of course, when we're level, when we're leveled, we're going to need to be recrowned and they're going to need to be polished. I'm marking these with a permanent marker so I know where we need to level most. And there you go, now we're getting down here where, this, where we had relief. We've got four frets on the trot there, and in six areas over four frets, eight areas over five frets so far. areas over six frets eleven areas over seven frets two areas there I'll give them areas one closest to you two in the middle three closest to me high spots over eight frets so a fret level completely warranted we need to do a fret level anyway because the neck's not straight 
And don't think there's anything wrong with the neck. You know, another one there. Do we have 12 over eight? That's 13 over nine frets. 13 eye spots over nine frets. It's, there's not anything wrong with the neck. It's normal to see a neck go slightly up and down along its length, ever so slightly. I see it a lot. There you go. Do we say 13 over nine? That's 14 high spots over 10 frets. So I've got them all marked. Da 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 da. Hope you can see it there. I'll show it again later at another angle, possibly. So that does warrant a fret level. I am not going to do it tonight. I just wanted to prep everything to show. I do not have to remove the um, machine heads, tuners, uh, because I've removed the nut and we've got everything bolted. If I was bolting it the other way, I would have taken the tuners off, but I don't need to remove them. So I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm going to come back in the morning, or well, tomorrow afternoon actually, after my shift at Royal Mail, and I'm going to check one more time that the neck is straight. And if it is straight, I'm going to come across with a levelling beam. I'm going to level all of these frets. I'm going to get the fingerboard taped up, um, and we're going to get them recrowned. We're not going to polish straight away. We're going to work. Oh, I've got to remove the tuners, by the way, because I've got to do the sanding of the um, of the wood yet. So I'll do. The fret level tomorrow. I might leave the crown and everything. We'll get all the um, neck sanded down. Or would it be better to sand the neck and stain everything after I've done the frets? I'm going to, have to do one or the other first. I'm thinking, get the frets done. I'm going to get the frets done, get them leveled, get them recrowned, get them polished. Once that's done, then we'll come back, we'll sand the neck and we'll stain the neck and get it all ready that way. It's going to be the best. We've got to do one or the other, and rather get the frets all leveled first. We also need to roll over these edges and file these edges again because the frets are sticking out, they are sharp at the edge. So, we need to basically do that profiling on the edges as well. So, we'll do the top, we'll concentrate on the frets first. We'll look at all the sanding and the staining later on. That's it for now. I'll be back tomorrow. This is totally not going to work with the last section of a video, but I found a piece of paper in the guitar case. And the owner did tell me about it and um, I was more or less absolutely right on the five-way selector when I said one to three seems normal, one to three normal teller and I said number five is like a wide humbucker mode which it is but I wasn't sure about number four and number four was a neck dark tone so pretty much spot on so my ears at my tender young age of 55 my ears are working perfectly because that's more or less exactly what I got uh, from just playing the guitar, one to three is normal, five seems to be a wide humbucker, which it is, but four I didn't get right, it was just a neck dark tone, and I would say it was definitely a neck tone, I knew that because I played it, it was really bluesy. So I got that pretty much spot on, so I'm quite pleased with myself here. So that has explained the mystery of the five way switch, which by the way, I really like. Um, but that is it, so I am knocked off until tomorrow now. Nah. Um, I will come back and give you an update and we'll, I'll probably have a camera at a different angle again then but I will come back and give you an update tomorrow afternoon. We're not going to stand on ceremony today, we're going to dive straight in, quite brutal with my um, levelling file from, uh, I think I got some Chris Allsop on eBay. It's a diamond file, it's precision straight and it will remove a lot of material uh, but maintaining the levelness of the frets. Uh, how this works is the high frets we have dotted along the board. Uh, while we're removing material, we'll be getting resistance, but once resistance eases a little, we'll know that we're level with the other frets. And I'm going to be quite brutal with this, it does remove a lot of material. And once that is done, we're going to remark all of the frets again in pen and we're going to go across with a leveling beam. Basically, perfectly ground flat edges. We've got some 240 grit on one side, some 320 grit on the other, and we'll go with the 240 grit to level all of the frets. Once we've got them all level, we'll go again with a 320 grit to remove some of the deeper scratches. It'll leave us a nice level uh, surface area, or the frets will be level across the whole length of the guitar. So, without further ado, clean the file and start on the frets. The frets are all marked up in black, the ones I need to work on. We're also going to hit the frets around the ones we're working on, but that doesn't matter because we're going to level the lot anyway. So I'm getting resistance leveling these frets, but once the resistance eases, I know I've got the fret more or less level. So we're just going to keep checking with the fret rocker, 
and we're now at that fret level. So you see how it works, it's very simple. You just remove the material. We're always looking to maintain the radius as well, that being the radius, that arc from there to there. We always want to maintain that radius, so we follow, we let the, we don't press down with the file, we let the file do the work, nice and light stroke. And we can remove a lot of material in a short space of time. looks pretty good to me. So we will constantly check the frets. I know more or less where we were high. That looks pretty good to me. Like I say, it doesn't take long to remove the material we need to remove. And I say these frets are pretty much level. What we're going to do is we're going to go across with the leveling beam. In a moment, I'll mark these frets up again. I'll be using permanent marker again. And we'll be looking to remove all of the marker pen in just a few strokes. And if that is the case, it means the frets are level and we can move on to the next part of the process, which will be to recrown the frets. Recrown is pretty much self-explanatory because we've leveled the frets like so across this way we'll have a flat part we need to rebuild that crown to do that we need to use a special file and I need to tape up the fingerboard so we're not to scratch the lacquer so that is done frets are level like I say it doesn't take long no. Hopefully I'm not going to slip with a pen and draw on the fingerboard. We don't want to draw on the fingerboard. Nice and steady. I'm just going to mark the tops of the frets. I'm also going to show you on the next part of the process, on the next part of leveling, how to maintain the radius. And it's different for different necks. On a standard, a uniform radius along the whole length of the next six to 12 inch radius along the whole length will far slightly different to when we do a compound radius compound radius being a conical shape a standard radius being a cylindrical shape so what we will do is where the neck is wider at this end than here we don't follow the lines of the neck of the, of the neck itself we actually follow in a straight line 90 degrees across the frets so when we put file in here, we get slightly overlap there. But anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to set the 240 grit. And we're just going to follow a radius. And hopefully remove all of the pen. Maintaining the radius. It might take a few strokes because some press will need more, more work than others. And a quick look tells me that bar this one fret at the end here, just about all of the pen is removed. So let's go again. has been removed from all of the frets. I can also tell by looking at the frets that that is quite a uniform radius. So again we go with the sharpie again we're going to now finish off with 320 grit. I don't need to check the radius with a radius gauge but just to satisfy your curiosity I will do at the moment. So now we have the frets level along the whole length of the neck. We have the neck as straight as we can get it. Which means when it goes back on the guitar, we've got a straight neck with level frets. And that's all we need. Quite a bit of work to do. We need to recrown and polish these frets. Bring them up to spec. So 
So we'll put deep scratches this way in the frets. We're going to start removing them by using the 320 grit. Make the scratches less pronounced. Push them very gently down. We're not putting any body weight on there at all. spots here. We've got a little bit of work to do. Put that to a couple of high spots there for some reason. Let's just check again. Now we're looking pretty good. So let's take the fret rocker again. I'm going to have a seat for this because those frets are now level. So we're going to ch precision check. Listen for any rock anywhere. Holding this fret rocker nice and gently. I've got one high one just there. I'm going to go straight into the file. Let's check again. Let's fix a problem. Again, from 15 onwards, sure it's going to be absolutely fine. I'm not going to put any fall away on these frets, I'm just going to keep a nice level board, one nice level frets along the whole length. I don't particularly feel that fall away is necessary. If someone asks for it, I put it in. And that is it, the frets are now level. So I'm going to clean up the board. Um, once that's done, we're going to take the fingerboard up and we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to crown the frets. Now the fingerboard all taped up, ready to recrown the frets. But before I do that, I'm going to take my precision straight edge, again, made by GMI. This is perfectly flat or perfectly level and I'm just going to check the frets along the whole length and there should be no gaps anywhere. And I already know that there isn't. But this is just to check my work, just to make sure we've got these frets level. And these frets are beautifully level. No gaps anywhere along the length. I bought this straight edge because Harris makes his precision straight edges from aluminium. And it's a lot lighter than the Veritas one I have. Now the Veritas one here is made of steel and it's three, four times heavier than that one. But again, a great piece of precision kit made by Veritas, guaranteed level across its edges. And I'm just going to check with that one, that has some weight to it. And those frets are level across the whole length of the neck. Beautiful. So I've got good tools, uh, good precision tools. My precision tools I buy from GMI in Greece, they are only on eBay. 
check them out. I get my fret rockers, my straight edges, and my not straight edges from there. I've been buying tools from GMI for, I believe, six years now. I was buying tools from them when I first started doing this as a business, professionally, as a business. Um, I didn't know at the time um, until I went and bought some new gear a bit later on and I started getting fret rockers from them. And fret rocker they make is the best one I've ever owned. So I trust you in my gear, fantastic stuff. But there you go, these uh, frets are perfectly level across. So I'm going to crown them in a minute. I'm going to have to loop the camera and I'm going to bring you in and show you how I do that. So let me get the camera moved and uh, we shall crack on. Most of you will know what crown it is, but for those of you that don't, I will just explain. I'm just going to mark up a couple of frets using a non-permanent marker. It's just that's because it's just easier to remove later on rather than use a permanent make it marker. You've got to set off. So these frets, we've sanded them this way, leveled them, and across this length, we've now made the tops of them flat. And we need to rebuild that crown. Uh, going this way like imagine it like a D on its side going that way and that's because we need a point of contact from the top of a fret where the bottom of the string hits the top of the fret we need it to be a smaller area not too thin that it's going to um, cause any buzz or snap the string so I would normally go for something like 0.4 of a millimeter width and to do this in the old days we'd have used something like a um, three cornered file with ground flat edges and you'd have basically filed across and arched your file as you come across and done it both sides and you'd have rebuilt, rebuilt that crown but nowadays we don't need to do that we have for instance for quite a few files that help you get that crown and you would have a particular crown in file with that curve built in like I have here thing is this file it's quite a, does quite a severe cut and it scratches quite a lot uh, again, I have friends in the business who use a diamond file for the same purpose and I could use that and I will use this for finishing my frets off. But what I do use is I use a Stumac Z file and this to me is worth its weight in gold. It is a two cut file. It's diamond. I do believe it's 300 grit. It has a short cut one side and a long cut the other. Then you turn it 180 degrees. It has a short cut the opposite side and a long cut the opposite side again. And what this does is this will build up that arc on both sides as you turn it over but it will not touch the top of the fret and it will leave you that nice thin line uh, down the top once that's done because this doesn't cut a perfect arc I will then go over with the profiling file now this profiling file was a gift from a friend of mine Nigel Roberts who you probably know if you know him you know him as leicestershire-luthier.co.uk uh, Great guy, fantastic guy. He gifted me this a few years ago. And I don't use it all the time, but uh, I do like to use it. And um, Danny is a protege and his apprentice has now taken over Leicester Shaluthia. And Danny does it this way, using just one of these. I actually don't. I actually prefer to use my Z file. I'm going to show you why. And I'm not saying any other way is wrong because it's not. But anyway, let's go with this. Three or four strokes, two, three or four strokes. Flip it 180 degrees. And there you go, we have a nice thin line down the centre of the fret. Now that will be a little bit pixely or a little bit blocky, you know what I mean. I think 8 bit. So what I'll do is I'll then take the proper profile and file and just to round off, I'll do exactly the same, just a few strokes. And there you go, and that fret will now have a perfect crown like that. I'm going to show you a couple more. Always clean your file. There's one done. And I could zap. So in no time at all. I have three done. The reason I probably don't use this file all the time is it's getting old now. And my other files are pretty new. But there you go, that is three done in no time at all. You'll see when I clean the files, you're going to get some residue off here. Look at that. A little bit of wet for the second wipe. And there you go, it files ready for the next one. So we've got three done there. 
I'm going to crack on, get the rest of them done. Once they're done, we're going to come back and we're going to need to polish these. And that is, again, it's another job um, that needs its own explanation. So I'll come and explain that a little bit later. Like change of plan, there's absolutely no point me polishing all these frets when I've still got the bevels to do and the frets are sticking out at the edge, over the edge, because the lacquer has been removed. So I'm going to have to file down these uh, fret edges and I have three files to do that. I'm going to use my straight edge coarse file. I'm going to do it all by hand, like so. And I'll be able to tell when I'm just cutting into the edge. That feels a lot, lot better. Doesn't take long. Like I say, I have three files to use. I'm going to use this one mainly. Because this will use a lot of material in a short space of time. We're getting wood dust. That means we've gone far enough. Just going to grab a brush. I could also, if I wanted to, use my levelling file, my diamond one, which I'll just use ever so gently just to smooth out some of those scratches and then I will we'll use, did I grab it? I'm not sure if I grabbed it or not uh, but it was out somewhere, oh there it is my Swiss number no. 4 cut file by Valorb beautiful file, this is my favourite one just going to brush again This has got one flat side, and that is the flat side. And this is a real smooth file, so I'm just gonna, by hand, just go backwards and forwards, just to make sure right up to the edge of the water. It will give it a rolled edge effect as well. And there you go. And now these edges are not sticking out. Feel a very tiny bit, but once we've got the uh, once I roll these bevels over again, which I'll do before polishing because we've already crowned. I'm polishing the frets, so I've got this done, otherwise I have to come back and do this again. So I've removed the tape, most of the tape is still a little bit there. And that's that side done. Let's give it a chamois there. I'm going to wipe all this down and clean it up before I stain the neck, but I need to sand it anyway. So there, so now what we've done is we've taken all these sharp burrs off there, still a little bit there, I'm just going a little bit by hand. nicer so we've got to do the far side again we'll just turn it over in the vise padding in there I'm gonna do the same again this side pretty much using these three files sharp sharp one sharp coarse file takes a bit longer this end because the frets are closer together so you're filing a lot more. Once I start seeing wood dust flying off, I know I'm close enough. That already feels a lot better. A little bit more this end. I'm 
when I got this time where it's just smooth. We know we're cutting into wood, not metal, so we know we're close enough. A couple of things I need to do, I need to come roll these edges, the beveled edges again, with a small file. I've got to take the finger board up for that, then we can get on with the polishing. Check that I'm happy with that. And that feels a lot better. A little bit sharper still at this end. And there you go. That's those bevels here and here rolled over. Uh, we've got rid of all the sharpness. And um, what I will be doing is we'll be taping up the fingerboard and I'll be rolling these edges over just to make them nice and smooth. So once I get that set up, I will bring you back in and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Hoping the light is good enough. I am on the night bench and I'm just going to show you what I mean about rolling over the edges of the bevels. Now what we did a few minutes ago was we went over to the other bench, put the guitar, put my neck in a vice and we rolled over or filed down these bevels were filed and specifically the edges because the edges were protruding over the edge of the neck that's because the lacquer was removed and with the lacquer being removed the frets are still as wide as they were but the lacquer's gone it's removed width of the neck so we filed those down and what we need to do we need to roll these uh, beveled edges over so I'm just going to grab myself a little cloth I'm going to be using my Stumac fret edge tool. Uh, great little file. This has got a safe edge there and a safe edge there. It's just got a cut in on each side. All we're going to do is we're going to roll over these bevels here. It's just a matter of rolling over, again rolling over and going over the top. And what we're doing is removing these sharp edges. And with it being a safe edge on the bottom, we're not going to cut into the tape or the wood. So it's just a matter of a couple of strokes and one across the top. And again, we are going to sand these anyway. But that is very easy. Look, just three strokes is all you need. And it's just taking the, away the sharpness of these beveled edges on the, at the edge of the frets. Really simple. Before I move back onto the polishing, because we've roll, rolled over these edges now with a file, we also need to do the same with some uh, sandpaper. And I've got six, some 600 grit here. And we are going to just, well, not, I'm not going to pull up, I'm not going to do my stroke, just the down stroke. And we're just going to roll over these fret edges. And this is going to smooth them off even more. And then when I polish, anything we touch on these edges here, once I polish this way, we get rid of any of them marks anyway. So, just a matter of just going over. Just to round them off, make them feel nice on the fingers. Same again this side. I'm going to pull down you see how that works so I'm going to do the whole neck you see how it's working there beautiful I can round these over really really nicely look any sharpness on there at all now Now let's feel and that no sharpness on there whatsoever. I'm going to move my neck along. Well, I'm going to do these here. And just remember, I need to do these in the middle a little bit later. So again, They're beautiful. Now I've done those five. I've done up to this one. Blah, blah, blah. I'll just keep my eye where I need it to be. And that's fine. I'm just 
just nip that in there and there you go and last few to do I've done one two three four five so I've got one two three six more to do giving them eight strokes each Now run my arm across, they feel really smooth now. So we've got lovely rounded edges on the edge of the bevels. We've got no sharpness sticking out. These frets are now ready to go back to the other bench. We can crack on and get the polishing done. Welcome back fret friends. Just want to show the frets now they are done. And they look fabulous. Look at those. Looks like a brand new neck from here, doesn't it? So what do I need to do with this? Well, I need to give it a rub down with some 400 grit sandpaper. I may even tape over the frets or the edge at the top of the uh, neck while I uh, sand the rest of it down. Um, and that's about as much as I can do for now. So I'm going to get all sanded down to 400 grit, get it nice and smooth. These edges are now wonderful. You can't feel the frets sticking over the edge anymore. Feel fantastic. And again, I'll just get you a close up. You can pause that right now. And that will give you time to look at those frets. They look absolutely fantastic. So what we're doing for staining? I have no idea. Uh, in the past, I've stained and tinted with anything I've had to hand. Now, it is not beyond a uh, question that I may use some um, turmeric mixed with some water and get myself a good darker yellow stain on there. It's going to be quite difficult to match that, uh, but I will have a go. Anything I have to hand, I will use. I do have some teak stain up there. I also have some darker stain up there. Rustins would die. I use so I'll be making a mix of certain things and also remember that the I'm going to coat it with a good few coats of um, boiled linseed oil which again will darken the wood itself anyway so we don't need to go mental as long as we get it somewhere where it's not wire and it's pretty close to what's on the top there I think we're going to be okay I would like to keep that logo intact so I'm only going to lightly sand it over there you will now see the um, imperfections, well not imperfections, they're where the owner of the guitar messed up when he put string trees on and he drew them in the wrong places. I'm not even going to fill those, I'm just going to leave them as they are because that's what he did. I will sand as much crap out of here as I possibly can. I may drop fill with some um, epoxy just to make this area look a little bit better. Um, but there's not a great deal I can do there, just clean it all up and get it stained. It's already removed some of the logo, I don't want to remove any more than that. If I had confidence in some kind of pen or something, I would go over that and, and, and rewrite it, but I'm not even going to touch it, I'm going to leave that just as is. Um, so I'm going to get some 400 grit out, give it a light sand in, um, just rough everything up, just so it takes a stain a little bit better. We need to remove a bit, of, a bit of dirt from this surface here. So I'm going to crack on with that. There's no need for me to show you me sanding the neck by hand. Uh, it's pretty straightforward stuff. So I'm going to crack on, get it done, get some stain mix, give it a stain and see where we are. I will come back and show you the results. So I've given it all a rub down with some 400 grit. I did go with some stain on the back, which is not going to work because it's too dark. So I'm going to sand that off again. Once that's sanded off, I'm going to basically clear all the wood, get any grease off there. I'm going to give it a coat of naphtha, which to you is zipper lighter fluid. Get any grease off there. And I am just going to stay, I'm not even going to stain it. I'm just going to go with boiled linseed oil, give it a good few coats of that. If it is too light, I will mix a bit of Rustin's wood dye. Uh, this is what really darkened that. I'm going to mix this one part of this to three parts water. So it's a really concentrated mix and just give it a brush over with a rag and just see what that does. So I just need to remove this little bit there and I'm going to crack on and get it all done. Um, I will come back and show you uh, little bits of progress now and again. Slight change of scenery for this time of year. I'm working on my, not what I call my night bench, that's because I have an LED up there uh, spreading light on the guitars I'm working on. And just makes things easier. Also, I have my neck jig on the other bench working on a guitar neck over there. It's clamped to the bench, so I can't use that bench over there anyway. So we're on the night bench. Uh, we're going to restring this guitar. Now we have the neck back on. 
Um, Diodero 1046s are what the client wants. So we're going to stick a set of those on. Already explained we've got the three barrel type um, saddles on this, so intonation may be a problem. Well, I've heard. No, maybe about it. We will not, we will not get it 100% spot on because you never do with these unless you buy the compensated ones. But we are going to get that done. Uh, another thing we need to do is we need to recarb the nut. It is shimmed this side. It's shimmed this side from a factory. I don't know why. It doesn't look as if it needed to be. But rather than mess anything up by knocking the shin out, which was super glued in, um, I've decided just to recarb the nut. So that is what I will do. Uh, but first and foremost, we are going to get some strings on it which I'm going to do off camera, uh, once that's done we'll bring them to bring the strings to pitch and we will cut these nut slots ok guys, so you're going to have to use your brains a little here uh, because I'm going to be cutting the nut and um, I have set the action at the 12th fret where I need it to be, I've set the radius on the saddles uh, the intonation's all set, so I've got everything where I need it to be, bar the depth of the nut slots. Now these nut slots really are not deep enough at all. There is a shim under this side of the nut, which well, I imagine was put there at the factory. It does not need to be there, but because it was glued in so heavily, I decided not to chip it out because I might have damaged the actual neck itself. So I've left it in, so I'm going to shape the nut with the shim there around uh, to the point where I think it should be. Now, I've checked the amount of relief in the neck and it's 025 millimeters between the fifth and sixth frets, this area, which is exactly how I want it. So this is how I cut a knot. And these are my recommended uh, measurements. So we're looking from the top of the fret to the bottom of the string. And on this side, I'd like to go about 0.3 millimeters. On this side, about 0.2 millimeters. And we gradiate down we could go lower if we wanted to, you could get down to about 0.12 if you wanted to, maybe even lower than that, I've been lower in the past. But these for me are a standard working setting. So I'm going to have a look here. We're absolutely miles above 3.3 there. That didn't need a shim. Let me just check with the 0.9 and see how much higher we are than we need to be. It's about 0.8, way too high. It means when you're barring a chord, which way you're going to be sharp all of the time. Let's try 0.7, see where that is. That's about 0.7. I would like to see that about 0.3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my nut slotting files. Uh, what have I done with those? There you go by Hosco. Bought these earlier this year. I think they cost me about £125-£130 delivered. There's 11 different sizes here. I'm going to just grab the ones I need for a 10 set, 1046 set. So we're going to need the 16 which will be the 17. 42, 32, 24. We're going to need the 10. We're going to need the 13. 10, 13, 16. That's for the 10, 13, 17. We're going to use a 28 for a 26, we're going to use a 46, and we're going to use a 36. So that is my set. We'll use the closest one we can. And we don't have a 26, but we do have a 28, so it's a little bit wider. Don't have a 17, but do have a 16, so we'll slightly angle that one. So how do we go about cutting the nut slot? Really easy. Normally I'd have a tuner out, but I'm just, for quickness, I'll show you how we do it. I'm going to take the point 046. Good thing about these, these cut a beautiful U shape or string shape. We're we'll looking there like that. They cut the perfect shape for a nut slot. It's just a matter of carving in. And the string will fit beautifully in there. You see, we've removed some. Don't go gung ho, make many cuts. Keep measuring, keep testing. Don't worry about the tuning, I've not tuned the guitar in yet. We're just looking for getting the action right. Like I say, I should have a tuner. I'll grab a tuner in a minute. 
but we're just going to cover it. And what I like to do is very, very slightly angle down toward the tuna when we're going over the knot. So I'm going to cut level with the neck, and just angle back slightly toward the tuna. Again, don't go too deep because you'll be replacing the knot. And there you go. Getting closer to where we need to be. Let me grab a tuna. The reason I'm reluctant to go grab a tuna is I have another guitar on the neck jig over there with a red hot high and a clothes iron on the fingerboard just melting, not melting the glue, but just, uh, we're just trying to straighten the neck. And I've got a low heat and I don't want to be knocking anything. But anyway, let's bang this tuner on. Not quite there yet, but very close. Again, nice and gentle. Small cuts. Getting very close, just starting to buzz a little. Take your time, it's not a race. Still go a little bit lower. See how I'm checking and checking there. Don't want to go too low. Like I say, we don't want to be replacing the knot. Not the magic glue I've put in there to glue it in, you know. Sounds good. Listen. That's perfect. We can now move on to the next one. We're going to go a little bit lower than 0.3. So we're going about 0.275. Well higher there. So we're going to want to hear more of a buzz on the next one. I'm going to clean the file. Put this one back. That one's done. We need the 0.036 now. There you go. Give it a wipe. I always clean the files anyway. Measure it again. String over. Same with this one. Don't go gung ho. It's not a race. Angle slightly back. Not far off with that one. Again, wipe the file. Just buzzing, we can still go a little bit lower. I'm going to get the 0 0.25 under that one. I don't have a 0.275, but I want this 0.25 just to start ringing. Not yet, so a little bit more.
perfect just buzzing this one on the 0.25 I want it just touching this so we're going to move on I'm going to get the rest of them done off camera you see exactly where I'm going there once we get down to this one we'll be at 0.2 millimeters and that will be absolutely fine for what we want so I'm going to crack on I'm going to get it done once it's done we're going to come back we're going to check the intonation check the radius again check the action at the 12th fret once it's done we're going to stretch the strings right in and that will be it regarding the nut I'm exactly where I want to be 0.2 this side just ring in 0.3 over here let's get with 0.3 perfect all the way across so that is the nut cut now I need to look again at the action at the 12th fret the radius uh, on the saddles which you can't see at the moment I will alter the camera angle and uh, angle and I'll uh, again check the intonation and make sure we are exactly where we need to be guys I hope you're not too put off by the camera angle as it is at the moment it's just the way I'm going to do it this time of the year with it getting dark a little bit earlier and I'm using the other bench I've got another guitar on my 1973 Gibson Les Paul Custom with a twisted neck so that's over on the main bench, um, all jigged up, bolted down and everything. And I can't really use that table for the next few days. So I'm using this, I'm using my night bench with the LED light up there. But anyway, this guitar is finished. It is a Bloodstone Telecaster. Fabulous looking thing. Came in needing a fret level and it needed the neck sanding back and um, staining and oiling up. Now I used very, very light stain, but the grain has popped really nicely look at that it really really works i gave it what i did was i sanded it all back to 400 grit stained it at first that didn't work it put too much stain in there so i sanded it back again then i gave it two or three coats of oil then i slightly stained it again and that way it popped the grain really really popped out it's a beautiful looking thing now it feels smooth as anything this neck the owner is going to love it um because he didn't like the varnish so the varnish is all gone it feels wonderful it looks fantastic look at that and now it's had the center it's had a complete fret level i also had to um rebevel the edges of the frets because they were sticking out because the varnish had been removed so they're really really sharp on the edge they're not sticking out at all anymore so it's a lot more work really than i have charged for uh, I haven't undercharged the guy, but he did have a budget to work with, and uh, I thought we'll stick to that budget. One criticism of this guitar, I do not understand why it has a shim under the nut there. It never needed it. I didn't remove it because there's that much super glue in there holding it in. I thought, I'm not going to chip that out because I'd end up damaging something. So I've actually cut the nut. I've taken more or less 0.4 millimeters out of these nut slots, uh, but the guitar itself... It's not a bad looking thing at all, is it? Beautiful woods, beautiful colours. Look at that, it really does, and it really does look the part now, especially with the uh, with the uh, lacquer taken off and it all oiled up. It really, really does look very nice. So that is it. It is a Bloodstone Guitar Works Telecaster, handcrafted in Derbyshire, UK. It's had a fair bit of work. We've stuck some Deodario 1046s on there, uh, standard. Oh no, it's got a five-way switch, which we mentioned before. Um, I'm not going out to tell you exactly what it does again, but uh, the position five, it gives us a wide humbucker, which I thought it would do. Uh, we have the normal one, two, three positions, and the normal telepositions, bridge, uh, bridge, neck, and uh, just neck on its own. Position four, I think it just does a quieter version. But anyway, what a beautiful thing. You have to check back, check back on the video and check out what it does. I did mention it earlier in the video so that is it this is all done great looking thing i've played it it plays beautifully it really is very very nice indeed but it's all done so uh, one thing i need to do is remind you my websites which are facebook.com forward slash ng17 that's facebook.com forward slash n-g-o-n-e-s-e-v-e-n there is also fretfriend.co.uk i am victor i am your fret friend and until the next project as always god bless you be good to each other and i'll see you in the next one